Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting a really cool 3D model of Barrett Wallace from the Final Fantasy 7 video games. So in this video I've broke this up into four separate parts so you can just watch whichever part suits you and with that we're going to start with part one which is the skin and hair. So for the first things first we're going to use a really nice dark rust 302 one of my uh, all-time channel favorite colors and we're just going to mix this on our palette here and then we're going to take this straight to the skin. Now I'm just going to use one of my uh, slightly more, uh, I don't want to say broken brushes, but a little bit more of my worn down and, and sort of older brushes because for this sort of layer and for this sort of area we don't need to be too precise. We're just going to cover all of the skin area in this colour. So we're going to cover all of the face, the arms, the fingers um, and things like that. Not forgetting all of the area just underneath the arms, all around the chest and things like that. And of course all around the face and bits here as well. Just trying to cover this in this really nice dark, dark uh, brown. So this Dark Rust 302 is a great, great colour. If you're used to uh, watching me on the channel, you'll know that I use this to use as a base tone for a lot of different colours. Now from there, what I'm going to do, as you can see, I'm just going to mix uh, this Dark Rust 302 with a little bit of flat earth. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the wet palette here. So that's all I'm doing is just mixing. And I've got a blob of the Dark Rust 302 on the right and a blob of the flat earth on the left. And then it's just a case of mixing these colours together. So it's about bringing a small amount of the um, the flat uh, sort of um, brown colour, the flat earth tone, into the dark rust so that it gives us a little bit of a boost, so a little bit of a, a contrast shift and a little bit of a colour improvement. Now, as you can see, I'm using very, very thin layers as well, so the water on the wet palette is creating a nice thin down tone so that that means the, the paint's not going to be too over the top, it's not going to be too bright, it's not going to be too vibrant. This gives me... Um, the opportunity to use multiple layers to build these sort of tones up and this is great because when we paint and we don't want it to be too over the top we want to tighten kind of build these layers slowly so that then it becomes a nice smooth transition on the paint and so that the the colors and things blend together quite nicely and create this tone of uh, contrast between the darker layers and the lighter layers so as you can see the lighter tone is already starting to make an impact but it is nice and thin so it's going to dry down in a really nice smooth fashion and what we're going to do from there then is just using a little bit of water and a little bit of the flat color as you can see and then i'm going to add a little bit of the dark rust into this so we're using more of the lighter tone than the darker tone and this is just about practicing mixing your paints together mixing the colors and things like that just to get to a tone and a texture that you're happy with and that's all I'm going to do then is using sort of the lighter tone. And again, you can see that I have quite a nice watered down paint here. I'm just going to apply this just on the areas where I'm thinking or I feel like the light is catching on the skin. So this creates this really nice uh, lighter sort of skin tone. Now, it does look like it's very, very bright and vibrant on the model, but it will dry down darker, especially considering, don't forget, these layers are nice and thin because I have used a little bit of water, as you could see, mixing the paints together. That means that the paint paint isn't going to uh, take over and it's not going to be too bright on the model. This is going to uh, dry down quite nicely and it's going to give us that really smooth transition that we were talking about. Now the cool thing with mixing your paints on your palette like this is it gives you the opportunity and the option of being able to build those layers up in between as well should you want to. So you can mix a little bit of the darker and a little bit of the lighter colours as much as you like. So you can go three, four, five, six layers and build those tones up as much as you like. And it is pretty simple. It's, it's sort of as straightforward and as simple as that to do. Now, once I've done the skin, because that's all I'm going to do to the skin is just build those layers and build those highlights up by using those mixed tones of the two sort of browns. Once I've done that, I'm then going to move on to just painting the hair and the beard. And by doing this, I'm just going to use a Tenebrous Grey from AK Interactive. Again, as I always say on the channel, if you don't have this particular color, it doesn't matter too much. You could just use a black and that would work out equally as well for you. Uh, nice and simple, because that's all I'm going to do is just create a nice sort of black tone to the hair. And and just across the back of the hair and all down the beard as well and I'm just going to dab a little bit just around the sides of the hair just to create this illusion that there's a little bit of a, a very short sort of buzz cut going on and that's all we need to do for the skin and hair so part two we're going to move on and we're going to paint the clothes 
This one is going to be a little bit of a longer sort of tutorial and a little bit of a longer part. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to start using an Ardennes green uh, from uh, scale 75. doesn't matter if you don't have this paint. Another great alternative to this would be uh, military green from the uh, from uh, Vallejo. Sorry. So the military green would do a very, very similar sort of thing to this. It creates a nice dark sort of green base color that we can build up from. We're going to cover all of that on just the trousers. And once that's dry, we're going to move on to use uh, just across his leather shirt, just using leather brown from Vallejo. And this is going to give us a really nice tone. So this is going to separate and break up the brown sort of the colors and tones that we've got on the skin, but also give us a really nice sort of brown color that is almost sort of um, sandy or almost has a little bit of an ochre sort of tone to it as well. And this is going to break our model up quite nicely. You might be tempted to paint all of the model. So all of these bits like the, uh, the vest and things like that also in a much darker brown. Um, but the reason why I sort of went away from that slightly, was some of the original original sort of characters in the video game, his his shirt, his sort of um, waistcoat or his sort of leather jacket is a little bit brighter, but it does also break all of those colors up because we don't want everything to be a dark brown and things like that. We want to kind of mix things up so that it creates a lot more to look at on the model as well. So once we've done his leather jacket, then I'm going to go back to using the Tenebrous Grey or Black, depending on which one you're going to be using. And I'm just going to paint this over all of the other areas. So I'm going to cover all of the leathers, all of the metals, the boots, the bags, the straps. Everything now is going to be covered in just this color. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to build these colors and build these tones up later as we go. Um, and we're going to paint a lot of different leather colors and a lot of different browns and things like that. But for now, because we're focusing on the leather jacket and the trousers, we want to kind of make sure that we have these base coated ready for when we build these tones up. So we want to do this so that when we apply a little bit of a color wash and things like that onto the clothing, uh, it's going to tie those colors into this without us having to go back and repaint areas that, um, that, that we want to sort of just build those leathers up from. So this is a great way of just base coating all of these areas and preparing them for the next stage later. Now, once that's dry, I'm going to use soft tone first. And soft tone is a nice light, light brown color. Normally, I would use something like a dark tone color. Uh, but after talking to a lot of different people in the chat, so uh, Michael Virtuoso, you know who you are. Uh, people do tend to say that the dark tone, uh, sorry, the strong tone can be a little bit too dark or a little bit too garish. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to use soft tone just to create the creases and create the shadows on this model. And we're going to do this in a very easy way just by placing a little bit of this all across the jacket here. It doesn't matter too much if you get a little bit on the skin. It's not the end of the world. Um, but what this is going to do, this is going to tie all of those colors together and create a uh, shadow, but without darkening the model down too much. Um, so this is just that happy, happy me medium. From there, then I'm going to use a military shader, which is a nice dark, dark green shade color. And I'm going to apply this just across the trousers. So this is where we're going to have that dark green that we used originally is going to have these really, really great sort of uh, darker, darker points just sitting in between all of those creases. It's a very simple way of getting the darker colors into those creases and kind of giving you an idea as to where we're going to build up and where the paint is going to uh, go next and, and sort of how we're going to build the vibrancy and the highlights. Because the wash sits in those recess points and just creates this little bit of a, a small pool and creates a um, slightly darker area, this gives us the perfect, um, the perfect way of building the colors back up. So once that's done, we're going to go back to the original color that we used to begin with, which was the Ardennes green and just applying a little bit to the brush, as you can see. And I'm just wiping off a little bit of the excess. I tend to use my palette a lot like this, which is why my palette looks so worn and so battered and so beaten is because I tend to apply the paint onto my brush and then just use the edge of the palette just to, to drag off or scrape off any of the excess so that I don't overload my brush too much. It's always good to make sure that you don't overload your brush because you don't want to put too much paint in one blob and then have to sort of rewrite it or or fix it and things like that so it's always good just to make sure that you've got just enough paint on your brush that it lasts 
but then you can always go back and add more if you need to as well. And again, using the wet palette, this has given us this really nice smooth uh, transition, this really nice sort of wet um, watered down paint, which has given us the ability to really bring this paint onto the model and transition this into a really, really nice even sort of way. And again, by the time this all dries down, this is going to create a nice, even, smooth tone onto the model. And as you can see, I'm just painting across all of those folds, leaving the shade in all of the recess points. Now from there, I'm going to combine that Ardeen's green and a Sherwood green. And this is going to be how we're going to build up a nice smooth highlight transition so as you can see doing the same thing as what i did with the skin just applying a blob of each into the wet palette adding a small amount of water and combining these until i get a stage or a color tone that i'm quite happy with normally what i say to people when i do these highlights it is just literally a 50 50 so it's kind of like a half stop up and that means it's just one blob of each equal parts of each and that gives you a really nice smooth transition i keep saying smooth transition on here because this is what we want we want these paints to smoothly take to the miniature we want them to dry down nice and smoothly and we want them to blend quite evenly as well so that it doesn't look over the top overdone or too sort of um blotchy and things like that on the model and you could see just how i use the very tip of the brush just to gently build up those tones and those highlights and again you can see that's all i'm doing is just painting across all of those raised areas leaving the shaded areas as is now you can be very very specific about where you want to place this and then because we're using thin down paints you can also use multiple layers to build that vibrancy and that's how we build that color tone and that palette now once we've allowed that to dry we're going to use just the Sherwood uh, green on its own and this time we're going to use a little bit extra water just so that we 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 make this into almost like a glaze so this is really really thin and this is just giving us the opportunity to be very very specific about where we place this as you can see just using the very very edge of that size zero brush here I'm just trying to apply this now just across all of those folds those creases all of those raised areas and just kind of controlling where I want the highlight colors and those highlight tones to be as you can see just like so and that's going to dry as i said earlier smoothly into the miniature in such a lovely lovely way that it's really going to boost that that character and give it um, sort of that illusion that the light source is catching on the top of his knee there while underneath and on the back of his leg is a little bit darker and things like that it's a very easy and smooth simple way of painting and building up these transitions it takes a little bit of practice just to get used to blending and watering down your paints but once you get there, building up these smooth transitions becomes really, really fun and a really interesting way of painting as well because it gives you that option of just blending these tones together and creating a really nice sort of final effect. The cool thing is, by using a wet palette as well, you're not stuck with just using the lighter, the darker and that halfway in between. You can blend and mix those colours depending on what you need. So if you wanted to mix sort of a, a little bit of a darker part of the highlight and blend that in as well, you can do it, it gives you sort of a, a real open source a real open-ended way of painting and a real nice uh, different way of doing things so once we've done the green and the trousers are looking great we're going to go back to that leather brown and then we're going to do exactly the same thing as what we've just done with the trousers and we're just going to start to paint this nice thin layer of leather brown up onto the model that's all i'm going to do is follow the way that the folds and the creases go as you can see just around his arm here we've got these creases and these folds just underneath so i'm just going to follow that with the very edge of the brush and then using some of these little scratchy paint techniques so just using the edge of the brush and scratching the the, the paint down the model just like so we're going to create this illusion that there's a little bit of a scratchiness or a bit of a worn out sort of effect on on the uh, the leather jacket here as well and it's nice and simple to do again it's nothing majorly advanced just using nice thin down paint using the tip of your brush to create that illusion and create that tone and texture and then just building up slowly layer by layer to get to the vibrancy and the consistency that you're happy with as you can see i'm going over a part that i've already painted here just to build that vibrancy and to build that sort of uh, tone up as well just like so and then we're just going to go all the way around there we go just again over some of the raised areas some of the areas more towards the top of the shoulders just to build that color tone and build that highlight and then we'll go through and build another highlight later 
Now, this is the area where I can show you exactly what I meant by painting and making sure that we paint areas where the shade has sat in the recessed areas because you can really see on the model where all of those little folds and creases are just on the front of the jacket here. So that's giving us plenty of time and plenty of opportunity to be able to um, build that character and build that control uh, while keeping the shaded areas uh, together. Uh, the, the shaded area is darker. Now from there we're going to build up into a green ochre so we're going to use the leather brown and the green ochre together and doing the same thing we did with the trousers we just go into manage to make a really cool really nice uh, sort of smooth transition this nice thin down lighter paint this highlight color and this highlight tone that we make in and again you can see it's having an effect on the model but the smooth transition is also allowing uh, the paint to sort of build up and take to the miniature in a nice even fashion where it doesn't look too over the top. It will be pleasing on the eye and it will be nice and smooth and it will look really, really good when it dries down. Don't be afraid of all of these different uh, brush strokes and things like that when you're painting because the brush strokes, especially when painting things like leathers, do add to that worn out effect and add to the way that the model looks overall by the end. It creates a really good authentic organic sort of end product. Sometimes, although we're talking about smooth blends, sometimes you don't want everything to look as smooth and as perfect as possible. Sometimes those blends uh, can contain sort of brush strokes and little bits and broken areas and little sort of creases and things like that. And that's what creates that illusion of sort of realism when you're painting. Once that's drying then we're going to use the green ochre on its own. So this is going to be the final extreme highlight. So for this one, this is quite bright. So I'm going to paint this using a dabbing motion, just like a stippling motion off the very edge of the brush, just around the edges of uh, the frayed edges of the jacket, just to create a sort of frayed sort of uh, color and a frayed sort of technique. You can also add a little bit just across the very edges of the um, uh, the collar here and also just around the very edges of the jacket. So that's the clothes complete. Now we're going to move on to painting all the different leathers. There's a few different leathers here, so I'm going to use two different techniques. I'm going to use a Vallejo one using a ready sort of color. And we're going to start with a flat brown. And this is a nice red sort of tone. So I'm going to paint all of the bags with this. And I'm also going to paint his glove with this as well. Um, and I'm also going to paint the boots in this color too. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint these in a more ready sort of tone, this sort of red leather color. And this is going to tie into a lot of the original artwork from the old, old version of the video game. I know that the games had a little bit of a boost and a little bit of a, a resurgence lately. And a lot of the graphics and a lot of the characters look a little bit different. Uh, but I like to stick more closely to the original sources as I can, purely because it's a source of nostalgia for me. Sometimes uh, it's nice to embrace how old you are. And sometimes it's nice to, to look back on the days when you used to be carefree and young and just play in the video games. So it's cool to paint things uh, similar to how you remember, uh, because that's the nostalgia and the fun of painting these older uh, sort of characters for me. Although you could paint this up using uh, sort of the tones and textures for the new character, if you'd prefer. I mean, uh, everyone's different and everyone prefers sort of the old to the new and things like that. That's actually a good good point. Maybe uh, you guys could let me know in the comments below whether you prefer the newer version of Barrett or if you prefer the older version of Barrett uh, from the days gone by. So as you can see, I'm just painting this across the black. So just covering the nice red base color with this uh, sort of flat brown. And you can really see that it's having an immediate effect on the model. Once that's dry, we're going to use a mahogany brown. This is the perfect step up. You could blend these two together if you wanted a sort of half stop. You know, you could do sort of the flat brown and then the mahogany brown and create this sort of half stop if you wanted to. And uh, you really don't, well, you could do. I personally didn't because I just wanted to go for a little bit more of an edge kind of highlight, as you can see here, just using the very tip of the brush just to scrape a little bit across the edges. And again, using the brush strokes to create that illusion of broken or worn you know sort of old battered worn leathers and things like that i'm just going to do the same thing by picking out the knuckle areas and things like that just on the gloves and that's going to create again that illusion of depth and contrast you know where we've got the shade in the recess between the fingers then you've got your your base color and then this sort of highlight just here creating that highlight point just across the glove and across the knuckles again simulate in depth and creating a little bit more depth to your miniature and making your model a lot more interesting to look at 
So this is one of the two leather effects that I'm doing, as you can see, just scraping the uh, the paint across the, the models just to create like those scratches and scrapes across the leathers and things like that. And again, it creates a little bit more of an organic, more authentic sort of look and a more authentic sort of tone to your leathers so that everything's not just a flat colour or one flat smooth transition is giving you that illusion that there's uh, sort of depth scratches highlights and things like that so you can really see that i'm doing this now on the boots as well i'm using those uh, brush strokes to build that tone and to build a little bit of that contrast and that um like i say those scratches that that sort of um depth and and tone and texture and things like that so yeah, we're just going to build that just like so. It doesn't matter if you leave some of the brush strokes and you leave some of the colour underneath, because that's exactly what we're aiming for. That's exactly the, uh, the sort of effect and the character that you can get out of the miniature. So once that's done, that's part one of the leather. This is kind of part two. So this is a uh, leather style that I painted quite a few times on here. I wanted to show you guys two different leather effects in this video because I know not everyone has uh, AK Interactive colors. So what I'm going to do is just using the AK Interactive leather brown. Um, I'm just going to start to build this tone through the uh, the belt and the straps and things like that and kind of show you how this one works. So this one is, as you sort of build it a little bit, it kind of has a similar sort of tone in some areas to what we've just used um, the tone that we used from Vallejo was a more red red brown color so it kind of has this kind of ready tone to it whereas the tones that we're going to build on this one is going to be a little bit more of an orange tone so they're both still warm colors they're both still warm earthy tones and they will tie into each other quite nicely um, but what we're going to do is by having one more red and one more orange it is actually going to create a little bit of a difference this means that the, the leathers and all of these colors aren't going to blend together too much. They're actually going to create little bits of character all of their own. And they're also going to create really good uh, focal points on the miniature for your eyes as well. So your eyes aren't going to be drawn to just one big blob of uh, the same sort of color brown. Instead, we're going to have multiple tones of brown between sort of the skin tone being one, the leather pouches being another, the leather straps being another. And that's giving us more to look at. So like we've been doing, we're just going to mix the leather brown and the deep brown together. And again, just using half and half, so 50-50. And again, using the very tip of the brush. Don't worry about using all of these little scratchy techniques and scratchy motions. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to blend it in perfectly because that's the beauty with leather. Is leather can be all scratchy and worn and broken. And if you do add a little bit too much in, just take a... Uh, an old brush and just use that to kind of suck out the uh, the paint in the areas as you can see there I made a little bit of a mistake and just used an old brush just to suck the paint uh, back out of that little recess point and there you go you can see just using uh, that that sort of stippling effect and it's creating more of a texture uh, which is what I was talking about earlier you don't want everything flat everything smooth sometimes these textures they make a big big difference to the overall look of the miniature they create a, a more vibrant sort of character and and a lot more sort of depth to the model as well there we go. You can see I'm trying to be very, very careful with the straps using the very tip of the brush. Again, I'm using a size zero brush for this. So um, trying to be as careful as I can. Um, and this is a good brush for details. This one is uh, giving me the ability to sort of catch all of these leather straps, but without overdoing it and catching on other areas that we've painted previously. And there we go. You can see just using that tip of the brush again. There we go. And just across the belt area as well, just like so. Yeah, there we go. So once that's done, then we're going to use just the deep brown on its own. This is a nice vibrant color. And as I said, this now is going to start to lean more towards a sort of orangey color. And this is going to separate it from the other leathers. And again, using that size zero brush, using the very, very tip, what we're going to try and do is dab this across the edges. But we're also going to try to drag little scratches in like a, uh, almost like a, uh, a across the straps. And that's going to create like these little scratches and these little sort of scuff marks and things like that. And again, if you put too much on, just use your brush to suck off the excess paint, just like so. Make sure to use an old brush to do this because uh, you don't want to leave any paint sort of sat in the... Uh, the ferrule of your brush or sat in your brush so that it can dry down and ruin your brush. If you use an older brush, then it doesn't matter too much if it gets stuck in there because this is the point of using the older brush. 
and there you go you can see i'm still just using that scratchy technique just like so and you can really see now that these leathers are starting to separate from each other so they have a similar sort of tone binding them together but at the same time we are making them look completely individual and completely unique from each other which is great that's exactly what we're looking for and again it's a technique that looks really extreme it looks really hard to do it looks really well done but actually, with a little bit of patience and a very small brush, something that we can build up to quite, quite easily. It's not something that we need to spend ages and ages doing. So once that's done, I'm just going to use a medium orange. This is a nice, bright, bright, vibrant orange. And this time I'm going to be very, very, very careful because this time I want this just on the extreme, extreme edges. So I want a very, very, very small amount of this. And this now is just going to catch that highlight point on these leather straps. And that's where we're going to end up with this sort of slight orange tone difference. And this is going to bring it away from those red tones that we've got on the pouches just like so and again as you can see some of these bits are quite difficult they're quite small so it doesn't matter if you make a mistake you can always fix it with that old brush there we go just picking out some of those areas trying to be as careful as possible not to get too much of this on the model but just picking out our light source picking out some of the top points some of those areas that we really want the the orangey tone the lighter tone to kick through and really make that model pop then as well and stand out just like so. So that's part three done. That's the leathers. Now for part four, I'm going to do a video or a part specifically just on painting the metals. So I've done this before when I painted the cloud uh, strife video. And if you watch that, you'll be a little bit more familiar with the non-metallic metals. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to use the same paints. I'm going to paint this up in a similar sort of way. And that's all we're going to do is just blend these paints together like we've done with the leathers. And we're just going to build up this tone of giving us a really nice sort of grey up into a nice uh, non-metallic light source. So we're going to start with a dark, dark grey. So this is an ash grey colour. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this around some of the areas that we're going to prepare so that they can build up to be in a lighter colour. I'm going to leave the black in all of those recess points so you can see just on the gun arm here that there's black in between those round areas. So we're going to paint the grey on some of the parts, but we're going to leave the black in there as well because that black tone is going to be our shadow point. That's going to give us a nice area that will be dark and dingy and that will allow the areas that we've got this sort of lighter colour coming through to really, really sort of pop and catch the model and make the model look uh, absolutely fantastic. It's going to make the model look completely unique and different. So as you can see, I'm just trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on any of the other areas that we've painted. And I'm also using the very tip of the brush as well to paint all of the uh, buckles and straps and things like that. And just around the wrist, as you can see, he's got this bangle. And there we go, just a few little bits on the pouches so once that's done i'm going to mix the ash gray and graphite together in a nice half stop and with this we're going to use our first sort of step up in the highlighting so we're going to prepare the areas where these highlights are going to be and we're going to paint these on some of the edges that we kind of want the highlight in to create um this nice sort of more vibrant sort of bursts of color and tone and things like that so we've got our base color which was the ash gray and by the time you mix these two together and again with a little bit of water and things on your palette you'll see how these will blend into the miniature and create this uh, this sort of highlight tone so we're just going to build this around the gun and around the bangles and on some of the little uh, clips and um, things like that on the leathers and you can see that I'm just going to be nice and careful to try to get this on some of those highlighted points. So I'm going to stick closer to the top of the gun arm for this. So we're going to try to paint the top area of the gun in a more um, sort of uh, a lighter sort of tone while we keep the underneath in a shadowy sort of darker tone so we're going to go and we're going to build all of these tones up using these lighter grays and these lighter sort of off whites and things like that and create the non-metallic metal across the top but then we're going to go back and we're going to use sort of blue tones and blue colors and things like that i'm going to paint that underneath to create that illusion of cold cool temperature underneath while the light source and the heat and things and uh, like that are going to be hitting across the top so you can see that i'm just running this across the miniature running this across the areas that i'm preparing for that highlight tone and again don't worry too much about your brush strokes because that's going to add to the worn out the scratchy the sort of broken down effect and things like that as well 
So once we've done that, we're going to use the graphite on its own. And again, we're just going to do the same thing. So we're going to use those scratchy sort of dab in effects, watered down sort of paint so that this creates a highlight illusion color. And we're just going to start to build up where we want these highlights to be. We're going to be as careful as possible using the tip of the brush just across some of the edges and some of the areas that we kind of want to control where that light source is going to catch. And I mean, with this sort of technique, less is more. Now, that is sort of my trouble when I paint this sort of style. Non-metallic metal, less is more. So as you build this up, get into the most extreme highlight, you want a little bit of the extreme highlight so that it creates that burst, that illusion, that tone. For me, what I tend to do is I tend to add possibly a little bit too much of the lighter light source. I mean, you guys can be the judge of that at the end and let me know whether or not uh, that's something that you agree with or if you think that you enjoy my sort of own personal style of doing the non-metallic metal because there's a lot of different ways to do these things and I like to paint in my own way. I like to, to sort of do my own thing and kind of show you guys how I do it and offer you guys a, a, a kind of different way of painting so that you don't have to stick to the same things over and over and over again. It just kind of creates a little bit of a more diverse community with a lot more sort of uh, different kinds of effects and things like that. I mean, the more different st uh, styles and techniques that we've got, uh, the more interest in this sort of miniature community is and the, the better the models look and things like that as well. So once we've used the graphite on its own, we're going to use graphite and silver grey mixed together as well. And again, by blending these two together, this is going to create a really nice uh, sort of first stage main highlight. Because this is going to be the first highlight that really, really sort of grabs uh, your attention on the model. That silver grey is like magic because the silver grey really does sort of allow areas to really, really pop. You can see it almost looks like the light is just catching that one side that I'm painting now. Because that silver grey is giving it that really sort of extreme sort of highlight which is it's, it's fantastic it's a real like I say it's almost like magic so we could just could paint a little bit just down the bangles again as you can see each time I'm painting a highlight I'm painting less and less so that that creates almost like a pinpoint highlight almost as if the light is pinpointing or catching on a certain part or a certain bit of the model because you don't want to paint all of it you want the light to just catch on an area and that will create more of a an organic kind of uh, looking non-metallic metal this sort of organic looking steel or whichever uh, type of style that you want now like i say less is more you could make this gun a lot darker than what i have and then just sort of build up towards the very very top whereas i've sort of done halfway um, but again, like I say, you guys can be the judge of that later. You can tell me sort of what I can do to improve or whether or not you like this way that I do it. So once I've done that, I'm then just going to use the silver grey on its own. And again, that stippling effect, you can really see where these highlights are starting to appear and how this is really kind of having this really great sort of uh, almost light burst effect on the gun arm. There you go. You can see it's really sort of popping across the inside here as if the light source is just catching across and it's creating this really, really really cool interest in style. It's creating this really interesting effect and this, this really fun looking uh, miniature, this really fun looking painting style. And again, I'm doing the same thing just across the, the sort of stomach area here, the belt buckle where the material is and you know, just across the uh, the buckles, uh, across the, the pouches and the leather straps and things like that as well. All of these are going to be done in the same sort of way and in the same sort of pattern. It's just a case of building this texture and this layer up as you go and seeing sort of how you would do it and how you would approach it and sort of build in as you go. The cool thing is, if you overdo a little bit of the light source, you can always just go back to the slightly darker source and just bring the darker source back in so that it, it blends that colour together so you don't end up with too much of a, a, a bright sort of tone. And you can see there I'm just adding a little bit just across the very edges of the gun barrels as well. And once we've used the silver grey, we're going to use a white. So this is just pure, pure, pure white. And as you can see, I'm going to be a little bit more controlled and a little bit more sparing where I place the white now. So as I was saying to you earlier, this is going to give us this illusion where that's where the uh, the burst of light is just catching on that part of the metal, on that part of the model. And that's creating that non-metallic uh, illusion just like so. 
So you want to be sparing with this one because this is the less is more uh, more than anything else because this is the area that is really, really, really going to pop and catch your eye and make you go, wow, look how bright that is. Uh, but at the same time, we've got uh, about four or five different tones of grey building up into this uh, really cool looking non-metallic uh, colour. As you can see, just cutting this across the edges and painting this just down certain parts that I want the light source to be sort of a main factor just like so and it has a really really cool effect it's a really cool tone and a really cool way of of sort of painting metals it takes a bit of time to learn and a bit of practice but it's very very much worth it it's fun to do so once we've done that we're going to use anthracite gray so this is a very very sort of bluish gray so as i said at the beginning we're going to use a lighter source across the top and then a more sort of darkened steel sort of cold blue across the bottom just to create that that tone and that illusion and as you can see i've watered this down quite a bit into being more of a glaze and we're going to glaze this back up into a bit of that white as well because the layer isn't going to be too flat it's going to create a little bit of a nice blend and tone some of the highlights and some of the darker points uh, together in a really nice even fashion you can see how much of an effect this has just on uh, creating this layer and if you put too much on don't forget what i said earlier just use a uh, old uh, worn out brush and just absorb some of that paint back off the model um, just like so and here we go and just add in some of the blue back in here there we go and it's really starting to create an amazing looking sort of steel kind of um, metal sort of color but without using actual metallics i'm also just going to use an ocean blue you can use any blue for this or you could use red if you wanted to and pretty much that's all i'm going to do is just pick out the small sort of sight on the front and back end of the gun you could use a red if you want it to be more like a laser pointer or anything like that but i've gone with blue just as if it is a scope just to kind of create this uh, cool looking scope on his gun and all in all that is barrett done in four parts and hopefully in this video there's been a lot of cool little techniques and cool little clips and snippets and things that you could take into paint in your own models even if it isn't just painting barrett from the final fantasy game you have to let me know in the comment section below what you think of my uh, overall version of barrett if you like the mixture of the different browns and how they've come together and if you like that i've stayed true to the original source and of course what you think of my non-metallic metals also if you haven't don't forget this is part three of my final fantasy 7 journey and i do already have a video on cloud strife and tiffa lockhart already for you guys to go and view as well so check those out when you get a chance and let me know in the comments below on those what you think as always my friends i really appreciate all of your time your positivity your energy and i thank you so so much for everything that you've done here on the channel and continue to do so i am truly truly humbled by all of the positivity and the energy that you show me here on the channel and i am forever grateful for everything that you do please my friends as always take care of yourselves look after each other and i will hopefully see you guys in the next video bye now